Okay, we're getting ready to pull honey for the first time. This is my new extractor. We're going to wash it out well. Make sure it's clean and sterile. You see these, are, you put the frames in there and they spin around and uh, the honey comes out that spigot into a bucket, which also has its own spigot and allows you to put it into the honey jars or containers. But before we do that, we need to make sure everything is good and clean. So we're gonna begin the process. The key thing we want to do is make sure everything in here is clean, just like doing your dishes. You know, if you're going to eat off of something or it's going to touch your food, you want it to be clean. So that's that's what we're doing here is just making sure that this is completely clean inside. Right now, I'm just trying to make sure everything in here, basket, bottom, but especially the bottom, is clean. So I'm washing it just with Dawn dishwashing detergent. I will later come back and sterilize with hot water, boiling water. This is phase one of the cleansing process. And again, the goal is just to make sure that it is completely clean and safe. Spigot is just where the honey will come out. So I want to make sure it's clean. Okay, we have the extractor cleaned out and uh, I'll turn it on to show you how it works. And there is the spigot that the honey will come out of. And you've got down the bottom, I'll dry it out just a little more, but basically four frames, one here, one there, one here, one on the far side. The frame will sit sideways on that metal piece. You can put a medium sized frame or a full size frame in there, a deep frame, they would call it. And so you can vary the speed of this. That's slow. So you can see the concept of how it works. It's spinning the frames and that's throwing the honey out. That's why it's very important that the inside of that be, be clean. And it throws the honey out. It goes down in the bottom and then you are able to pull it out of the spigot, open the spigot and pour it out into a bucket that also has a spigot and you use that other bucket to put it in the containers. I don't know that I'll find any honey to pull up here, but we're going to look. Okay, that has honey in it, but it's not capped. They don't cap them until they get to the right water consistency. They got partial capping. It looks like this whole upper box is going to be partial capping. Okay, we removed the box so I could get down to the honey that's actually capped. heavy. That's cap frame. I actually uncapped some of it when uh, I pulled it off. So what I'm doing is getting, getting the bees off of it. and then back down in the hive. And I 
I'll move it over here. Good bit of honey. It's just not capped. If you don't, if your honey's not capped, you run the greater risk of it spoiling. Now, if I was just, you know, if it's just for my family, actually, I'm not selling any of this honey. So I could use it personally, and we'd be fine. But I want it to sit a long time. this strap on here we have storms sometimes I strap them down and, uh, I know ahead of time there's a bad storm coming I strap them down <laughs> well, that one's capped on one side Doesn't have much anything on the other, so I'm going to pull that one. It's capped on that one side. There's some honey that spilled out from the frames I pulled. You can see bees are gathering around to enjoy it. Okay, we're just going to do four frames. There's actually a lot of honey in the hives. It just is not capped yet. It has to be to the right water content before they will cap it. If it has too much water, they won't cap it. And it increases uh, the possibility of the honey not lasting. You know, honey lasts a long, long time. They found honey in Egyptian tombs that you could still eat. But it... Uh, needs to uh, cure, if you will, kind of get rid of a lot of its water content first. And it's been such a cold winter that they've just not been able to cap it yet. So I'm going to do four right now, and then I'll come back at a later date and do some more. Give me a chance to try out my extractor. So that's the bowl it'll come out of. I've got a, a double strainer down there. Uh, everything's been cleaned and sterilized, so I'm going to uh, set up and uncap these, and then we will uh, uh, extract them. You can see, you know, the the capped honey. This one didn't have anything on the other side, but it was capped on this side. So again, I only pulled four frames right now. Okay, so the the first thing I'm going to do is uncap. Of the frames I'll start with this little one this one only has one side capped the other side's cone but there's really not anything in it I would also have in here I've just got a little container that I'm going to put the wax in because the wax can be reused for a wide variety of things everything from candles to you can melt it and you can put it a wax layer on your plastic frames to help them uh, comb those out so there's just a lot you can do uh, with the wax. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just getting the layer of wax off the outside of the honey so that I can spin it out of the cells. first time so I'm probably wasting a lot but gotta start somewhere some people use knives a lot of things to uncap I plan to just use this uh, 
Amish guys I talked to and get some of my equipment from, they said that's all they ever use is one of these forks. See all that honey running out already? I've seen some kind of do it like this. They just kind of pull it down like that. Um, just try to open the cells and then the idea is that as long as you get it open, you don't get as much cleared away. In other words, there's still a lot of debris in there. But, I mean, a lot of wax debris. But as long as everything's uncapped, that wax debris will be caught by your strainer. So I've seen some do it this way. I'm probably not doing it as well as they did, but I appreciate all the people whose videos I watched. I actually watched a lot of people's. Overall in beekeeping, I probably watched more of Barnyard Bees and Cayman Reynolds than anybody else. And then when it came to harvesting, I did watch Cayman, but I watched a lot of other people actually. Sorry, I don't remember them all. All right. So the last one. Okay, I'm going to do it as low as it'll go. Just so you can kind of see the idea. How it works. So I'll have to speed it up to get it to throw it out. But that's, that's the idea behind it. And it will spin it down into the bottom. I'll open that spigot. It'll run through this strainer and down into that bucket. Everything's been washed and sterilized. Have it bolted to these boards because it can wobble when it gets up to speed. I also don't want to scratch the floor, but it allows me, I can stand on those boards and keep it from wobbling. So that's the idea behind those. Smell the honey. Clean that one out. Now the bees will clean that up and they'll reuse it. I butchered it a little bit, but they'll reuse it. Rotate these. That one only had honey on one side. have spun it too hard you can see I probably spun it too hard because it uh, it creased the cells now I'll put it back in the hive and they'll fix that but in the future I may not spin it so hard so they don't have to do so much repair work well, if you can tell there's honey down there at the bottom that container okay i've got a strainer here it's actually a double strainer i just want to get any debris that might be in there out especially those wax capping see how it comes out at the end i'll need to tilt this uh, a little bit but But in that honey that's coming out is some of the wax, the beeswax. So the frames, I mean, the those two screens will catch any of that kind of stuff. And all that will go through is honey. So you can see in that lower level, there's honey down there. So the honey is running through this one into that one and then eventually on down into the bucket.
Okay, I'm letting all that beeswax drain. You can see the, the good honey down in the bottom. It's got a spigot on the front, and I'll use that to actually put it in containers, but I'm letting all the honey drain out of that beeswax. All right, these are the, the frames. They've still got some honey in them. I'm gonna set these out for now and let the, the bees work on them. I may actually stick them in one of those hives after a while, but for now, let them feed on it. What I'm doing is I'm taking those frames that I just spun the honey out of and I'm scattering it among my hives. I just added this box. This hive's been doing well. It'll, they'll eat what's honey left in it and they'll clean it up and they'll go to using it. So I'm going to put one of those frames into this hive. This is a small swarm and I'm trying to build them up. All right. Anytime I can get rid of those plastic ones, I like to. I'm not a fan. They'll do in a pinch, but I'm still not a fan. That'll give them a little food. See, there's still some honey on it. And it gives, once they clean it out, it gives the queen cells to lay in. Okay, I'm going to uh, put some in the jar for the first time. My little bear jars. are just little eight ounce bears. So this will be our, the first one. All right, so this is our first jar of honey from our bees, Brother Bees Bees. A pretty exciting day, and I'm having my first jar of honey on my birthday. It's my wife, Cindy, filling up our little bears. Each of those hold eight ounces. You can get quite a bit done. All right, that's our honey. My wife, Cindy, has been putting them in our little bears and we ended up getting a gallon and a pint of honey out of just four frames from my hive. So that's pretty exciting. Here's what I've been dreaming of. This gets some of our bees' honey on it. Dreams really do. 